Welcome to Bloomington Today. I'm Kaylin Cockreel. Thanks for joining us. One unique Bloomington property will soon be available for the entire community to enjoy. We were on site as the city began the first steps to turning the acreage into an area sure to please Bloomington residents. The house nestled atop this hill overlooking Normandale Lake has an interesting history. However, after today, that house will be no more. But what the city has in store for the property is sure to put a lot of smiles on plenty of Bloomington residents' faces. Tucked away on top of nearly 80 acres of natural habitat sat a home many never knew existed that was completed in the early 1950s. Its property, however, was well known long before the house was built, not just for its amazing views and natural wildlife areas, however. Property itself has a very interesting history. Um, there's an area here where there's a, a natural amphitheater, it, uh, it was called Bottle Hill, and I'm sure you'll have a shot of that later, uh, that shows a, a great location where actually they used to hold boxing matches here around the turn of the century. Now those were illegal, so uh, they used to keep lookouts down looking for the sheriff and uh, they, uh, when the word would come the sheriff was coming, the uh, combatants would take off their gloves and begin to wrestle, which was of course legal at that time. But they would have thousands of people come out from Minneapolis and St. Paul to watch these uh, battles that would occur here. Four years ago, the city acquired the home located on the northwest corner of 84th and Chalet Road from Olive and Lola Wallow as well as the 80 acres of property the house sat upon. The Wallows were avid environmentalists who took pride in keeping most of their property a natural haven for wildlife, which seems fitting as this land will become city parkland in a few short months. Here you can see crews taking one last walk through before starting up the bulldozer and taking the Wallow house down. And in its place, a rural feeling outdoor getaway. City officials hope will attract just as many visitors as the well-known prize fights brought in all those years ago. This is considered part of the Highland Bush Anderson Lakes Regional Park Reserve. And the intention is to keep this in a fairly natural state, but allow people that are hikers, uh, bikers have access up here. It's gonna be a wonderful scenic overlook. You can look over uh, Lake Normandale. Um, I think that you'll have opportunities to come up here and, and uh, just have a, a scenic uh, vista. You can see downtown Minneapolis from here. You can almost see St. Paul from here as well. And uh, just a place where people can come reflect and just maybe bring a little, pack a little lunch or a dinner and come on up and have a picnic. Once demolition is complete, crews will begin the cleanup process. And while it may take some time to get the park fully finished, Quali says residents are invited to come up and see the new park for themselves. It may be several years, but in the meantime, it still will be accessible, it'll be safe. People are welcome to come in. We may not have all the bells and whistles yet, but that's down the road. We'll keep you updated right here on Bloomington Today as phases of the park project are completed. Randy Qualley, the Parks and Recreation Manager, tells us that residents will be able to access the site as soon as the new grass seed is established. Most likely that'll be sometime in midsummer. Getting outdoors and heading to any of the numerous parks around the city of Bloomington is a great way to spend a warm day. City civil engineers are helping to make that experience even better. Take a look. Highland Bush Anderson Park Reserve is a hot spot for pedestrians, bicyclists, and other outdoor enthusiasts. It has several miles of trail, beautiful scenery, animals in their natural surroundings, and soon some new perks as construction on the trail begins shortly that will hopefully make your time at the park that much more enjoyable. We are reconstructing almost three miles of trail in the Highland Bush Anderson Park Reserve. We got a couple different grants from Met Council and the SHIP grant, which is a statewide health improvement program. And we will be reconstructing a lot of the trails that are existing there. We are going to be widening some of them from eight feet to 10 feet. And then we'll also be upgrading 
the PED ramps to be um, compliant with the ADA, which is the American Disabilities Act. The existing trails are primarily on the west side of Bush Lake, with wood chip trails on the southeast tip. With this reconstruction, those wood chip trails will become paved surfaces. Weather depending, the contractor will start work on the project as soon as April 25th beginning with some tree realignment and the removal of the existing trail surfaces, which, as you can see, are in need of a touch-up. Trails, just like roads, you know, deteriorate over time, and trails are slightly different. They don't necessarily get potholes like roads do, but a lot of tree roots will pop up uh, the trail surface and become a tripping hazard, and then water and rain can get in there, and it just deteriorates the bituminous surface, so we're upgrading and replacing the trail. Since the work involves the path, there will be brief periods of time that the trail is closed to pedestrians and bicyclists. I know that closing trails is kind of inconvenient and people love to run around the signs when it says trails closed, but for their safety, if they could obey the when you see the closed sign and stay off the trail, we'll try to be as fast as possible and make it as least inconvenient to them, but it, they could help us safety-wise. Keeping the trails in top-notch condition is expected to not only bring more people to the area, but promote healthier living as well. We got um, some funding from the statewide health improvement program. Their goal is to promote health and longer lives of all Minnesotans, and in Bloomington, um, we're hoping to match that same goal and fight obesity and if we have better trail surfaces hopefully people will go out and walk the dog, ride the bikes with the kids, you know, and just be more active. The city's overall goal is to eventually create paved trails allowing residents to travel the entire circumference around Bush Lake. According to Julie, with this expansion residents can expect to get about three quarters of the way around the lake. Work on this project is estimated to be done around the 4th of July. Each year, the City of Bloomington plants trees in parks and other public areas. The City has planted more than 1,000 trees over the last few years. Trees provide shade, homes for wildlife and oxygen, while beautifying our landscapes. In an effort to continue that tradition, Bloomington has several species of trees for sale. Based on the 2010 sales, there will be about 280 trees for sale, including river birch, autumn blaze red maple, snowdrift crab apple, and several more. To reserve trees for purchase, go to the city's website and keyword search tree sale. On the bottom of the page, you'll find the tree order form. Fill the form out and the total cost will automatically generate. Print out and mail the form to the City of Bloomington Park Maintenance, along with a check. The tree pickup date is set for Saturday, May 7th at Civic Plaza from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tree orders will be processed on a first-come, first-served basis. It's now time for a short break. When we return, we're joined by Public Works Analyst Carol Kaczynski to talk about an often forgotten event worth celebrating. Stay with us. Welcome back to Bloomington Today. We are now joined by Public Works Analyst Carol Kaczynski. Welcome, Carol. Thank you. Well, you know, let's just jump right into it. Coming up the first week of May, there's a national event that we here at the city want to get a little bit of promotion out about. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what that is. All right. Uh, that is the National Drinking Water Week, and it's been around for 30 years, the American Water Works Association and its members have been celebrating it for over 30 years. It's a great opportunity for water professionals and the community to come together and discuss the importance that water plays in our everyday lives. And it's just a great week to celebrate water. Wonderful. Well, why is National Drinking Water Week 
you know, why does it play a vital role, as you had said? But it's important not only to water specialists, but to the community as a whole. Talk a bit about that. Okay, all right, sure. Um, it's important because safe drinking water and water awareness helps provide um, public health protection, fire protection, and it also provides for a good quality of life. Oh, well, of course. Well, we, as many people can see, we have uh, a bit of a, a guest on set with us today. Why don't you tell us a bit about the statue we have here? All right, this is kind of a fun, fun statue. It's our mascot for the utilities. Uh, this is Willie Water, and he represents just good, clean, safe drinking water. And this goes all the way back to the 1960s here in Bloomington, where they used to have celebrations once a year. And uh, Willie Water, there would be a, a person dressed up as Willie Water, and he would greet the kids and have balloons and have water taste tests, which we've kind of followed through over the years as well. And uh, Miss Bloomington would be on hand. So it was a very official celebration, and everyone would come out from the community and um, just celebrate drinking water. Absolutely. Well, you know, that was something that was done in the 60s. What are some things that the city has done more recently, both here at the city and in the community to kind of promote and celebrate this week? All right, yeah. Um, over the past years, we, uh, we would send out billing stuffers that would have good conservation tips, how you can conserve water, um, both inside the home and outside the home and for the businesses. We have participated in some remodeling fairs, conservation fairs, and at most of those public events we try and have a taste test. Some kind of a taste test where we have a uh, sampling of bottled water and our Bloomington water and we let the consumer decide which is the best. Ah, I see. Well, one thing um, that we actually cover in a little bit here is what is preferred. So why don't you just fill us in on that because everyone wants to know who wins the taste test. All right, well the comments that we have received and the results first, the results are Bloomington Water has won every time. And we also um, enrolled a little um, sample in um, the state competition, drinking water competition, and we came in second place there. So we're doing very, very well. And some of the comments that we have is, um, there is not a better water in the state. I love Bloomington's water, and Bloomington's water is the best. So I mean, that, to me, those comments really sum it up. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, finally, why is this once a year celebration a priority for not only the American Water Works Association, why does Bloomington Public Works specifically make it a point to get involved? Um, well, we feel that it's important that we do not take this precious resource for granted. Um, it's a week to remember just the importance of clean and safe water, and it's important for now, current, and for our future. Absolutely. Again, we encourage everyone to celebrate the week of May 1st through the 7th by drinking more of Bloomington's great tasting water. And we'd like to also thank Carol Kaczynski for being here today to talk about National Drinking Water Week. New to Bloomington today, we'll be bringing you updates on events happening in Bloomington's South Loop area on our In the Loop segment. South Loop spans from I-494 to Trunk Highway 77, located adjacent to the 12th busiest airport in the country, as well as a National Wildlife Refuge. The plan for this new business district will soon take full advantage of this unique area. There are already some exciting events taking place in the South Loop. Still looking for that perfect Mother's Day gift? How about doing your part to help educate, spread awareness, and raise money to put an end to breast cancer by joining thousands of people who come from miles away to participate in the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. The race is on Mother's Day, that's Sunday, May 8th, beginning at the Mall of America. The 5K wheelchair race kicks off at 7.25 a.m., followed at 7.30 with the 5K run. The 5K walk is set to begin at 9 a.m., and the 1K walk is at 9.30 a.m. The mission is to get residents to come together and literally race for a cure. The organization seeks to eradicate breast cancer as a life-threatening disease 
through the advancement of research, education, screening, and preliminary treatment. If you'd like more information on this year's Race for the Cure event, visit www.comanminnesota.org. Tune in to Bloomington today, where we'll continue to bring you more events happening in the loop. Local law enforcement officials believe that resident participation in crime prevention is essential to keeping our neighborhoods as safe as possible. Civilians are educated and trained on ways to work together with their neighbors to address mutual concerns and find solutions. And thanks to the Bloomington Police Department's Block Watch program, Bloomington residents are doing their part to keep crime off their streets. We spent the day at a recent block captain's workshop where area neighborhood watch organizers come together to brush up on recent crime trends, learn new behaviors to look for when determining terrorist activity, get an update on new technology Bloomington police officers are utilizing to counteract illegal activities like in-squad cameras, and listen to some keynote speakers one part of the meeting focused specifically on cybercrime. It's the new frontier, the wild, wild west, and the fastest growing segment of crime is cybercrime. So you as block captains, how do you address that? If your neighbors go on vacation, you pick up their mail, you know, you let their dog out, you water their plants. But how do you help protect your neighbor in the event that somebody wants to come after them in a digital manner? Any ideas? Excellent point. Thank you for that plant. If I was your insurance agent and you came back from vacation and found that your house had been totally evacuated of everything of any worth, including the carpet and the copper pipes, and you had posted on there, hey everybody, we're going to Tuscany for five weeks, the kids are going to stay at grandma's, the dog's at the kennel, you have changed your risk profile. You have broken your fiduciary contract with your insurer. So if they were to pay that claim, and I talk to these insurance guys all the time, they would be reinforcing and encouraging bad behavior. If your neighborhood is not currently involved in a crime watch program and you'd like more information on it, we encourage you to visit the city's website. You can then keyword search neighborhood watch and remember, concerned residents are the best asset any police department has in fighting crime. Back in February, Bloomington Today brought you news of a new and unique traffic enforcement group in the making. Today, we're excited to announce the first round of enforcement events are right around the corner. The Hennepin County Traffic Group is a collaboration of more than a dozen law enforcement groups coming together to work special events throughout the summer. Studies from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration show that high visibility traffic enforcement does work it reduces traffic crashes, it reduces crime problems, and it raises public awareness about traffic issues within communities. The group's goal focuses on the fact that the general public takes notice of officers from outside the jurisdiction working arm in arm with one another throughout the summer. The Bloomington Human Rights Commission would like to extend an invitation to residents who are looking to expand their knowledge on the progress of women's rights by coming to a free screening of the documentary film Patsy Mink Ahead of the Majority. On Tuesday, May 10th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m., come share in the remarkable journey of Patsy Mink, who is most well known for being the first woman of color to be elected to the United States Congress, breaking new ground for women and people of varying ethnic backgrounds. Historians believe Mink redefined American politics, battling racism, sexism. She was also the co-author of Title IX, the legislation that opened higher education and athletics to women. A complimentary dinner will be provided as well as a distinguished panel discussion detailing the success of Minnesota professionals and athletes while demonstrating disparities that still exist for women today. Prior registration is required for this event. Please call 952-563-4948 or send an email to reservations at ci.bloomington.mn.us by Wednesday, May 4th. 
Well, that's all the time we have for today. To get more information on city projects, parks, road construction, and events, visit the city's website. To check out past Bloomington Today shows or other city productions, visit Bloomington's YouTube channel, accessible right from the city's homepage. That and so much more is online right now at www.ci.bloomington.mn.us. We'll do you even one better. Sign up for eSubscribe to have updates sent right to your email or cell phone. This is Bloomington Today, a presentation of the City of Bloomington's Communications Division. I'm Kaylin Cockreel. Thanks so much for joining us.